Howdy, my name is Nonat, and today I'll be showing you the basics of Pathfinder 2nd Edition Character Creation. Pathfinder is a little different from a lot of other roleplay systems. In many games, there's some element of randomness in character creation. You often roll dice to emulate this randomness and create a character using the stats you're given. However, in Pathfinder 2e, you'll be gaining a plethora of stat bonuses from your race, class, and even your background. With these stat bonuses, you'll carefully craft your character. We'll be constructing a simple character today, so you should be able to follow along with whatever character you decide to make. Just note that your stats and abilities will most likely look quite a bit different from mine. For today's tutorial, we'll be constructing Hugo Sliptoes, the gnome rogue. He's a slippery little fellow who hides in the shadows of city alleys, preys on the greedy to feed himself, but has a soft spot for the downtrodden. Now before we get started, I highly recommend this character sheet. I'll leave a link in the description. This sheet will auto-calculate and auto-apply various bonuses as you fill it in. It'll make your life so much easier, as Pathfinder 2e tends to have you write and erase numbers quite often. I'll also be adding timestamps in the description to each separate part of this guide, so if you're looking for something in particular, check down there to be taken to that section of the video. Ancestry To begin, you'll want to write tens into your six attributes, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. If you are unfamiliar with Pathfinder's six ability scores, there are in-depth descriptions on page 19 of your core rulebook. Every two points added to an ability increases its modifier by plus one. So if an attribute is increased from 10 to 12, its modifier goes from zero to plus one. The same is true for if the stat goes down. If a stat changes from 10 to eight, the modifier goes from zero to negative one. We want to play a gnome, so we'll go to page 43 in the core rulebook. Here, we can see that gnomes receive ability boosts to constitution, charisma, and one free boost. This means we add plus two to those scores. So constitution and charisma increase to 12, and we get to choose any of our six scores to increase as well. Since we plan to make a rogue, let's add it to our dexterity, because that's our character's key ability score. More on that later. Along with our ability boosts, gnomes also have an ability flaw in strength. This means we subtract 2 from our strength score, making it 8. Along with these stat changes, we can see our little gnome will have both the gnome and humanoid traits. We can add those to the top of our character sheet. While we're up there, we can add chaotic good under the alignment section. This means he's an overall good guy, but he doesn't mind getting a little dirty for a good reason. You can also put any deity your character may worship here, along with your size. Gnomes are classified as small. Along with picking our ancestry, we must pick a heritage. Our heritage helps specify exactly what type of gnome we are. Most ancestries will have three to five choices for their heritage, each granting their own boons. Since Hugo will be keeping to the shadows and sneaking through the darkness, let's take the Umbral Gnome heritage. While all gnomes gain low-light vision, this heritage gives us full dark vision, allowing us to see in darkness as though it were daylight, albeit in black and white. Finally, to finish off our ancestry, we get to take one level 1 ancestry feat. These are bonuses and abilities that are related to our upbringing and genetics. Typically, ancestry feats can only be taken by characters with those ancestries. However, feel free to talk to your dungeon master about some extra options. Perhaps your goblin ranger was raised by dwarves, so him having the dwarven weapon familiarity feat wouldn't be too far-fetched. But to keep things easy to follow, we'll stick to gnome feats. Perhaps Hugo made friends with a small rat who aids him in his sneaky endeavors. We'll take the animal accomplice gnome ancestry feat, which gives us a small animal familiar. I'll cover familiars and animal companions in a future video, so for now this feat doesn't change anything in character creation. We're going to move on to the next step, but keep an eye on what page your ancestry is on. We'll be coming back to this page later. Background Next, we can pick our background. 
Backgrounds are simple and effective ways to build out your character's backstory, as well as gain a few extra stats and a bonus feat. You can typically pick whatever background you want, but always clear it with your DM to make sure it makes sense in the context of the campaign. Since Hugo seems to be a bit of a pickpocket, Street Urchin would be the perfect fit, found on page 64. Like we said, Hugo knows his way around city alleys, so the bonuses conferred by this background make perfect sense. Since we took the Street Urchin background, we gain two more ability boosts. One of them has to be applied to Dexterity or Constitution, and the other one can go to any attribute. So let's increase our Dexterity again, raising it to 14, and put the free one into Charisma. Just because our little gnome is a thief doesn't mean he can't talk his way to success. Our background also gives us the Pickpocket Skill Feat, allowing us to swipe small objects off somebody's person without taking the usual minus 5 penalty. Class Now we're moving on to the meat and potatoes of character creation, our class. Your class will tell you exactly what your character can do, and will give you multiple different choices, allowing you to specialize your character however you like. On page 180, we have the Rogue class page. First, let's check out our class Key Ability Boost. Your key ability is used for a multitude of things and is often the most important attribute for your character. Most classes can pick from one of two choices of key abilities, such as Rangers being able to choose from Dexterity or Strength. Rogues are a bit different from other classes. Typically, their key ability would be Dexterity, but they have a feature called Rogues Racket. This lets you pick what kind of rogue you want to be, and changes your key ability depending on what you pick. This is a lot of information, but allow me to simplify it. A ruffian, whose key ability is strength, can perform sneak attacks with more weapons and can use medium armor. A scoundrel, whose key ability is charisma, can more effectively throw enemies off balance in combat and are trained in social skills. Or a thief whose key ability is dexterity, can deal more damage with lightweight weapons, and is trained in thievery. We'll be picking the thief option, and thus increasing our dexterity by another plus two, now 16. All classes get a number of features automatically when creating the character. On top of our rogues racket, all rogues also receive sneak attack and surprise attack, very helpful combat abilities that give rogues great potential at the start of combat, and the ability to take advantage of enemy openings. Rogues also tend to be more skilled than other classes, so at first level they also acquire an additional skill feat. This only applies to rogues, as most classes only gain skill feats on even levels. I'll be covering skills and skill feats in a future video, so don't worry about that for now. Finally, at level 1, you will always be able to pick from any level 1 class feat, Rogues have four options at level 1, and we'll pick Trap Finder. This gives Hugo an array of bonuses against finding, disabling, and reacting to traps, since he knows a thing or two about the subject. Free Boosts and Hit Points All characters during creation, on top of their race, ancestry, and background ability boosts, are given four ability boosts that you are free to assign to any stats you want. It's worth noting that no stat can be increased over 18 during character creation. Currently, our attributes look like this. Adding four more bonuses, we will raise our Dexterity, Charisma, Constitution, and finally, we'll raise our Strength to get rid of that negative modifier. Now that we have our stats fully finalized, we can finish a few other aspects of our character. Your hit points at level 1 are determined by taking the hit points gained from your ancestry and adding them to the points gained from your class. In our case, we would add 8 from our gnome ancestry, plus 8 from our rogue class, plus 2 from our constitution modifier, giving us a starting hit point value of 18. Now, your ancestry hit points apply only to character creation, so if we were to reach level 2, we would only gain 8 plus 2 hit points, increasing the value to 28. Class DC and Proficiency Below your ability scores, you'll see something called your Class DC. 
This is the number that is typically used when somebody tries to roll a saving throw against one of your abilities. If they roll that number or higher, your ability will have a reduced effect, or maybe no effect at all. You simply add the modifier of your key ability, in our case, dexterity, which is plus 4, to the key box, and tick the little T box next to it, indicating you have the trained proficiency in your class. In Pathfinder 2nd Edition, proficiency only has four levels, indicated on your character sheet by the letters T, E, M, and L. These stand for Trained, Expert, Master, and Legendary. If you are trained in something, you gain a bonus of two plus your level to it. For example, because we are trained in our Rogue Class DC, we add an extra plus three to it plus two from the trained proficiency level, and plus one from our character level. This brings our total class DC to 10 plus four plus three, or 17. If our proficiency ever increases to expert or master, the bonus increases from plus two to plus four for expert or to plus six for master. The same proficiency bonus applies to anything on your character sheet with those four letters next to it. These include your class DC, your armor, weapons, saving throws, skills, and spells. Rogues typically don't have access to any spells, so we don't need to worry about those right now. Skills Your class determines which skills and how many skills you get to start proficient with. Rogues have the highest number of starting skill proficiencies in the game. We'll be starting with Stealth, Thievery, and 7 more plus our Intelligence modifier, which happens to be 0. So along with Stealth and Thievery, we can pick 7 more skills for Hugo to be trained in. So pick any 7 skills that catch your eyes. There's really no wrong choice, as they all have their uses. I'll be covering skills more in depth in a future video as well, but there's a detailed list of skills starting on page 240 of your core rulebook. And before you ask, no, you can't pick the same skill twice to become expert. Typically, becoming an expert in something involves some kind of training and improvement during the campaign. The exception to this rule is typically perception and saving throws. Our rogue begins with trained in fortitude saves, but expert in reflex and will saves. We even get expert in perception, because rogues gotta stay sharp so nobody stabs him in the butt. <clears throat> Gear. At this point, you've got a functioning, living, breathing character. Now, they may be naked, but that can be easily fixed by purchasing equipment. I'll go into more detail on equipment in another video, but all characters are given 15 gold pieces to buy their starting gear. This includes weapons, armor, and gear like rations and bedrolls. Keep in mind, your class is only proficient in certain weapons and armor. Those proficiencies can all be found right on the first page of your class. If you want a simple guide on what to pick up, there are class packs detailed on page 289 that give a pre-built selection of items for each class. And that's about it. Aside from personal information and backstory, your character is ready to go. Put a blade in their hand and a quest in their head, and you're off to the races. I hope I was able to clarify some of the more obscure aspects of 2nd edition character creation. Or, if you're new to the system, I hope I was able to lead you clearly through the character creation step by step. Look forward to videos detailing more of the basic aspects of Pathfinder 2nd edition in the near future. I'll be covering such topics as gearing up your character, skills, and actions soon. If you want to know right when those go live, consider subscribing and ringing the bell to get a notification right when the video goes live. Thanks for watching, and until next time, no nat ones.